Online video can be a fantastic way of getting your message across because in this day and age, while people may only use one little bit of a press release and that applies to bloggers equally as it does to news sites, if you give someone a line of code for to embed a video, then the odds are they'll embed the full video. They're not going to sit and take the time to download it and just edit it. So it's a guaranteed way of taking a, a whole part of your message, so to speak. And to have an overview, I mean, there's so much opportunity because video is a great way to engage online you know it's also something that can be used by other companies white mckay has seen its uh, youtube podcasts so it's youtube videos and its podcasts used by the likes of cnn and y you know your video must be okay when the likes of cnn are using it in the news bulletins it's a great way to get a story out there you know we live in a very visual rolling age so a rolling news age medium and this is one of those things where a bit of video can go go much further than the five second a spokesman said or so and so said so there's a lot you can do with video and again you're not necessarily limited by your resources but more so your imagination and your creativity and video can be on anything you want i mean days gone by people thought video would really just be for sport but now you know Kevin Rose to first talk about food, for example, and body enhancements and how to make life better. And, you know, it's just what a great way of doing this. And you don't just need to have one-off videos. You know, you can have complete episode streams, as you can see to the side there. And the idea of it has to be all fancy, all full of, you know, huge budget, not necessarily the case anymore. Don't get, get us wrong. The, the more you spend, quite often the better it will look. But... For a very simple, straightforward, basic video, you can do not too badly with, uh, you know, a very straightforward hundred dollars camera, handheld camera, or even the camera built into an iPhone or an Android phone or some other device like a BlackBerry. And you know, the 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 basics are still very much the same. You know, while it is affordable quality, you know, if you want to spend a bit more, you can spend on script writers, you know, you can spend on production, you know, not just a producer, but also lighting and so on, you know, sound equipment, you know, the, the budget is the thing you have to ask yourself about, you know, what you can do, you know, how much is it going to cost, how much have you got, I mean, very often, it's not how much you would like to spend, it's just how much you've got, that is the main issue, and similarly, length plays a part because the, the shorter the video it's normally the case that the, the cheaper the production is as well you know there's less editing there's less correction work there's perhaps even less reshoots and so on so you know, these are all things that you have to keep in mind and you know it's not just about youtube which will be the one most people are thinking of at the start of this you know recording here but you know th there's also daily motion there's meta cafe there's blinks there's blip tv there's vimeo you know and these are all sites that <clears throat> have embraced social media you know they offer you the opportunity to embed you know players you know you, you can have a blog with a youtube player with a vimeo player in it you're not having to send people off to youtube and then say please come back to my blog you, know, you can do it all from one page and you know uh, audience and consumers appreciate that sort of thing and the other element to this of course is it's made very easy and very you know quick for people to share material which is a good thing because people do like to share if something entertains or informs or is very useful and it's not just about putting your video up there of course you know you have to seed your video you know you have to work out where you know it's going to go you know work out where it's relevant to go you know what tools you can do for sharing your videos out there and also of course monitoring to see if people are watching your videos to see if your videos are having an impact and just as with blogs and other parts of the online community you have to bear in mind seo you know video seo like picture seo is something that's incredibly underlooked e even now in this day and age and you, you should try and make sure you know your keywords you know have good links and so on and make sure these things work for you you know don't just fire up our movie you know dot move you know make sure it's got a proper name make sure you can fill out as much content details around it as possible and make sure you know when you're linking it elsewhere that you're giving it a good you know url link so that people can see exactly what it's about but that it's also applicable to your business goals
Now, just as with blogging as well, not only do you have to think about SEO, you also have to think about moderation and watch out for people coming along and trying to leave links or just, you know, say something rude or something outrageous. Or it might even just be that they really like your video, but they're saying it in a way that's not exactly on message for your brand. So, you know, you, you can't just fire a video up there and leave it out there for the world to see. You have to consider, you know, looking after it. You know, same way you look after a blog or a tweet that you put out there, you have to look after your YouTube videos or your Vimeo and, you know, just basically see what's said about it. And some, some basic tips to consider, and you know, we'll come back to some more advice in a moment, but you know, sound, you know, is a very important thing, you know, do, people will forgive, you know, bad video more than they forgive bad sound or out of sync sound in a video, so you know, always bear that in mind, try and do your audio in a quiet room or a, a, a location away from distraction and noise. You know, try and have a steady camera because while you know sound is very important, you've also got to pay consideration to the picture. You know, have a tripod if possible, or you know, lean, pull your if you're using a handheld camera phone, lean with your arms in, pulled in against your chest, just anything you can do to try and minimise the shakiness of it. You know, rehearse what you're going to say or rehearse what you're going to do in the video. You know, if you've got the option, you know, edit it just so you can trim out some ums, as, as, buts or perhaps some awkward moments that may have appeared. You know, use YouTube or Vimeo instead of hosting it yourself. Again, there's a very simple reason for that. You know, the bandwidth cost to video can be extortionate. So keep that in mind. Again, you know, you're wanting to keep your cost down while still getting a good audience. And you know, if you put it on YouTube or video, Vimeo, then that's one way of it working for you. Similarly, you know, something else to consider is a video transcript because that can have you know if you, the speech in the video is good you know that's going to have seo benefits you know google can't exactly go in and rip the text from a video so if you if there's a transcript provided or a transcript available you know use that and then you know that way there's double benefits it also means people who can't watch your video because they're at work or for some other reason perhaps due to low bandwidth they can read the video and they get the same information and this this next thing's a cliche, but it's a very true cliche, in that you know the best camera is the one you've got on you when you need it. You know, there's no point having a five thousand pounds camera in the studio when you're out with your chief exec and he suddenly wants to do something with you. So what you have to consider is right. I've got a camera phone, or I've got something like a Flip or a Kodak Zi8. What's you know what what's best here? You know what works. Uh, how can I maximise this tool that I've got right now? And again, if the content's good enough and you've made a half decent stab at it, you'll be forgiven for any shortcomings that there are. And on that note, you know, remember that you, know, you can shoot with your camera phone you know, in broad daylight. That's normally going to look quite good as long as you're not shooting straight into the sun or anything daft like that. But bear in mind that it won't look as good as an expensive camera, you know, for various reasons. And also, you know, if you try to use a camera phone at night or in darkness, it's definitely never going to look as good as a big proper professional camera. And that's just because of the sort of equipment used, you know, the components to the cameras and so on. And again, you know, while you're going, well, in that case, what's the point to using a camera phone? Sometimes you don't need the fancy camera. If you're just wanting a quick statement from someone or just a quick piece of information from someone, then just grab it with that. You know, social media experts like Chris Brogan shoot video from their dashboard with just basic handheld cameras. And for the most part, the video is perfectly functional. You know, you can't fault it. It does the job for what it needs to do. But of course, there's not just video to consider. You know, there's also audio. I mean, the, the iTunes podcast store is still very, very popular, you know, with millions of downloads on a weekly basis. And, you know, there's some more simpler platforms like Audioboo, which you just set up an account at Audioboo and you can record for three minutes at a time and it puts it up online for you, straight into iTunes. You know, no hassle required. You, know, you can even use Skype or something to record conversations and then make that a podcast. You know, simple tips, you know, if you're recording, have headsets in a quiet room free from other noises and distractions. You know, sit up straight, have water handy for your lips or your throat getting dry. 
if possible, avoid going um, ah, ooh. You know, just the, the noises that most people make in conversation. But if you can, you know, instead buy time by saying, oh, that's a good question, or oh, that's an interesting point, or I hadn't considered that. Or, you know, there's a lot of sort of holding statements that will give your brain a chance to catch up with a proper response instead of just going um, uh, um. You know, it just sounds more professional if you're not umming and ahhing. And if you need to host your, your, the content, you know, you can put it onto Libsyn, who, you know, for the, the likes of £15 a month, give you very affordable options. And again, they do a lot of the bulk work for you. You know, they will take it and they will give it a link into the iTunes store. So, you know, you have to ask yourself that if you are going to do a, a podcast and you think it may be popular, is it easier to spend £15 a month and give someone else all the hassles of looking after it? Or do you want to host it yourself? on your own site and then be completely responsible for it at all points of its life. Now, but back to video for a moment and you know what you have to consider when you're making your video, when you're producing your video, there's a lot to take on board. But again, it's some fairly simple tips. You know, we've covered most of them, so we'll just jump through them again. It's just, it's just to you know, get this idea into you that you, you can't just go shoot and off you go. As with all things, you know, whether it be writing, tweeting, social media in general, if you put a little bit of forethought into it, then you can most definitely reap benefits. And when it comes to audio, you know, we've already said that you know there's a lot to consider in that if you can do it cheaply, you know, be careful because you may be getting a worse performance than you expect. Lots of people pick up fifteen pound microphones from the likes of Maplins and Matalan and Matalan. Yes, actually, I have seen microphones in Matalan. So you know you can pick the, these things up and then they go. It's not stereo or it's not as good as I thought. And you know, very often you do still get what you pay for. But dude, if you are spending, try and spend a little bit on a good microphone and make sure it works with your setup. You know, many a person has bought a microphone thinking, oh, this works, and it turns out it's a USB microphone and they've nowhere to plug, you know, something like that into. So make sure your, your kit all works. You know, if you've got a camera already, take it along to wherever you're buying your your microphone from and simple steps you know very very simple steps and if you're recording your audio separately from your video for whatever reason then you know there are simple things you can do to try and make it all match up you know clap your hands a few times at the starting point for it to match up tap a desk a few times or something that's very easily you know noticeable and worked out so that someone can go right that starts there and that also starts there. Let's bring them together. And it's a, it's a very simple trick to keep in mind. And if you're doing using a built-in mic for whatever reason, it's just the camera you've got, or you're just, you know, that you've decided that that's good enough for what your goals are, then bear in mind that, you know, just because something's a low noise to you, it may be picked up a lot more by a microphone. So again, you know, rehearse where possible. But similarly, you know, bear in mind that if you're near a lift or near some sort of electromagnetic interference, you may get buzz. And if you've not got headsets to listen to the recording noise, you may not be aware of this happening. And similarly, as most people who have ever recorded with a camera phone know, you know you're not going to get great sound at a distance. You know, so always try and make sure, you know, people are near you. You know, there's not a lot of audio distractions for people. Even if you're shooting in a house, if you've got fridges or something like that on, or even, you know, a goldfish bowl with an oxygen pump, turn these things off so that they're not picked up in the background. And A, making an edit a bit harder, but also distracting for the end listener. Now, aside from audio, lighting is also a very, very important thing. And you know most podcasts try to just go for natural light to, because they're, they're they're shot quickly. So video podcast that is obviously and online video, you know the the majority are shot just with natural lighting, just to capture the whole idea quickly, and just you know get it edited quick, done, and out there. And you know some things to bear in mind though is that if you do just use natural lighting and you perhaps shoot at noon and then want to go back and shoot at four o'clock. Your lighting may have completely changed for the very obvious reason that, you know, the sun has moved. There may be more clouds in the sky. It may be more overcast. It may actually be raining. So but bear these things in mind. And again, always try and get as much of your footage in one go when you can if using natural lighting. Now, 
it can be handy to know some terminology, you know, key light, fill light, and backlight, but that depends on how serious you're going to take the lighting side of it. The, the vast majority of people will not bother with these phrases purely because they just think, right, we're shooting, it's bright enough, it looks bright enough on the camera, it looks bright enough when we've done a test and a rehearsal, so we're going for it. And that's fair enough. But, you know, these phrases, you know, key light, fill light, backlight, they're there just if you're wanting to step a little bit more into it and be a little more in-depth. And lighting, you know, if you go too overboard on lighting, it can make a video look too polished. You know, lots of people, you know, in this social media age of engagement and openness, people like the idea of it not being a, you know, a Michael Bay film or the next Ron Howard production. You know, it can make people look more natural. It can make events look more natural. And the more natural they look, the more trusting people can believe because it looks real. You know, it doesn't look fake. It doesn't look as if there's any cheating going on. And in that sense, then, it means that whatever the message is, it can come across as more organic and more honest and more open. So it's, it's something to bear in mind. You know, you're, you, when you're sitting down, you're going, right, we've got a budget of perhaps a thousand pounds. You know, do we want to spend some on lighting? If so, will we be able to set it up so it looks good? You know, do we want to spend it on audio or do we want to just spend it on a fantastic camera or do we just want to spend it on bringing someone in? You know, so th th think and consider these things through as you go. On the issue of a camera, obviously, you know, things you have to work out, you know, what sort of format will we want the video taken in? You know, what's a format that's popular online? You know, what's the options for sound? You know, what's the options for storage? You know, do we just want something that lets us record to its own hard drive or little built-in flash drive with no expansion? Or do we want the option for expansion so that we can fill them longer and longer as we want? You know, other things you have to consider, you know, are batteries, you know, is it independently charged? You know, can it take normal batteries? Would you have to charge everything up front? Can you film and charge at the same time? What size is the camera? I mean, these things may all sound fairly silly, but again, they're all limitations. You know, file formats, what it records to, what your sound options are, what your battery options are. You know, if you have spare batteries, if you need spare batteries, these are all things that you have to bear in mind. And again, if you sit down and plan your projects, in advance it will make life a lot easier for you for example if you sit down and go well i know for a fact that we only ever do five minute videos they're never longer than five minutes we always do them in the office at such and such a location therefore we only need one battery charged once a week or so on you know we don't need any external camera uh, so external mics because it's a quiet room away from all the noise and bustle of the general office. These things can all make life a lot easier for you. You know, by working, because again, if you're trying to convince someone to do this, you don't want to be spending a fortune up front. You know, because the, the less you spend, you know, the better your return's going to look. You know, if you spend $100 on, $100 or 100 pounds on video, and you can track it back and go, well, look, you know, it saved us costs here, or it's brought in sales of this, then that's going to look better than something that's cost 10,000 or 100,000. And also, to be quite honest, it's probably going to be easier to get acceptance and sign up, you know, by your bosses to do this if it's not going to cost the earth. But obviously, shooting the video is just one part of this. You know, there's also, you know, the, the whole issue of editing. And while some people say it's great just to shoot and upload, again, if you're looking at it from a professional point of view, there are some little things you can do that make it look so much better or so much more professional. And that includes YouTube giving you options to edit, you know, at the start or the end of a film or just add little bits just to tidy it up, you know, little tweaks to improve things. And, you know, you don't even need to rely on the likes of YouTube. You, know, you can also do Movie Maker, iMovie, you know, that's on Windows, Macs, iPhones, iPods. There's also other tools, you know, there's Final Cut, ScreenFlow, Cantasia, you know, there's a lot out there that you can do, you know, the Adobe suite. You know, there's a lot out there for people who want to, you know, really get hands-on, in-depth. But bear in mind that as you do, there's cost elements to all of this, obviously. You know, iMovie may be free on a Mac. You may have went and bought a Mac for someone in your organisation to do editing. But if, if no one knows how to use it, there's then training time involved. So you have to keep these things in mind. But who's used video quite well? Well, Virgin Mobile have. And they had a stunt coming out with the launch of a, 
a 30p a day mobile internet data tariff and what they came up with was this idea you know you'll see there that's 30 pence it's 30p so they produced a stop motion animated film of 30p's under the the, the idea of you know it's amazing what 30p's can do and you know they invited bloggers to come along to the virgin mobile oscars to talk about this you know to talk about other viral videos and you know they turned this into something that could be sold to traditional pr as well as having all the bloggers chat and they got news pick up you know it worked very well for them we've already mentioned white mckay how a quickly shot uh, video you know using a 130 pound camera you know, was used by cnn you can't go wrong with that but what should your plan be for a video you know do you just start shooting video and throw it up willy-nilly or you know like everything else should you sit and plan just to see how much you can make it pay off for you well obviously i'm going to say that you should try and sit down and plan ahead and we've already discussed a lot of this you know how much can you commit to doing it you know how quick can you respond to things i mean there's never any harm when doing any of this you know ask why you're doing it you know who's it for what's the reasoning for it you know, what do you expect from it i mean always try and know your goals because that makes life so much easier for you and it's not just about you know taking the video you know think about how you're going to do things you know is it going to be on youtube you know is it going to be for mobile you know is it going to be on a specific platform or all platforms you know is there going to be backups available just in case you know, again just think through everything in a very straightforward simple process of what do we want who is it for where is it going and you'll be off to a good start but obviously you know putting it out is part of the battle and you just need to think you know i know this sounds like we're stressing this time and time again but think about you know think about yourself when you watch video what do you like for example you know the surveys have shown the average online videos 3.8 minutes in length yet 10 percent won't get past the first 20 seconds so what can you do to draw people in you know to keep people interested and obviously there's an again we bring it back to there being an element of seo in this you know, make your title count you know make sure your video title says exactly what it can and here's a very simple tip for you if it's involving in any sort of way or fashion an idea of how to do something put that in there because very often people search for you know how to make cocktails how to cook something how to drink whiskey and these are important because that, if that's how people are looking if you've got something phrased in that exact way it has a better chance of being found and the more people who view it the more people who comment on it the more people who link to it the higher up the google rankings and the youtube rankings and the vimeo rankings that will go to so again you know make sure that you have good keywords available for you and it's not just about doing this once like all social media the idea is that you should do it on a regular basis. You know, you can use an editorial calendar so that perhaps every Wednesday is your video day or perhaps every Thursday or depending on what you have, you know, you make it a daily thing if you've got enough you know, projects to justify that sort of thing. And if you are only doing it very infrequently, even try to say to people, listen, every second Tuesday we'll publish a video or every third Tuesday or on the first of every month just so to try and get people expecting it or anticipating it so that they'll come back and look for it and they know that it's not just been a one-off and as with photography you know make sure you include other people this is a very simple thing you know you interview someone else who has a blog they're going to mention your video on their blog they're going to embed it on their blog and their fans will look at it as well as your fans will and that's you know that that's not rocket science it's the same way that when it comes to pictures the more people in the picture the more people who will come look at it so do that and again it can be a great way of getting getting yourself into a community if you say you want to start talking more about seo you go and meet the, the top people that are available for interview just record the video and that's you learning but at the same time you're also getting good blog content and good video content because you can take that video and embed it in your blog you know, and one of the best places to do this sort of thing sorry not blog embedding one of the best places to do this sort of interviewing thing is to go to trade shows you'll know, meet lots of experts under one roof 
perhaps you can even be invited there to do video blogs. Uh, if you say, hi, I'm going to video all these people and put it online. Is that okay? And they may come back and say, yes, there's a free pass. But it's also a great way of breaking the ice with people to get in the door with them, to chat with them and perhaps even turn them into a sales lead of your own. Something else that can be very useful is to create video tutorials. You know, show people how things are done. You know, that's a fantastic little thing. It's quite often underestimated at how many things there are in this world that people aren't sure about. You know, if you've got a new pram and you struggle to put it down, then, you know, take a video the next time you do put it down, put that online. You know, and then other people can go, yeah, I struggled putting that pram down. This video shows me exactly what I need. So it's a fantastic, simple trick. And again, you don't even need high expensive cameras for it. It can just be something on your camera phone or even your laptop if you want, if it's got a webcam built in. And, you know, tools like Cam Studio make things a lot better. You know, and they're not the only ones out there. You know, you can also use Screener, which just lets you take whatever you're doing on the screen. You know, it's a screencast that records what you're doing. Bang. You know, there's a video from you just clicking about showing how you do something on your computer. But video is also not just you about you going out there and going, here's a video, here's a video, here's a video. You know, that that would be almost like a modern version of going, here's a press release, here's a press release, here's a press release. No one's interested in that. You, know, you can use it to respond to customers, You know whether it be a crisis, whether it be something humorous, whether it just be basic product awareness. And one company that did very well with this was EA Sports, who had a glitch in their game where Tiger Woods could walk on water. And they brought a video out with Tiger doing exactly that. And they said, hey, turns out it's not a bug in the game. Tiger Woods is just that good. And that got millions of views and people spoke about it. And, you know, it was a much loved, you know, sort of element. So much so that when the next version of the game came about, people were asking for some sort of cheat code that let Tiger walk on water again. So, you know, again, they could have ignored that situation or they could even just dealt with it in a straightforward way. But the fact they did it with a bit of humour got them a lot of goodwill and got them a lot more publicity. And again, you know, you can use videos, you know, to run competitions. You know, you, that that can spread out to people. You can ask them to put it on Facebook. You know, again, you know, just like as with words and blogs and what you can do on Facebook and even what you can do with 140 characters on Twitter, you're limited only by your imagination here. So keep that in mind. <coughs> but if you can plan a series, you know, said a couple of slides ago that the idea should be that you are running a series, you know, tell people you're going to publish with some frequency and try and build it so it's a series to give people a hook to come back or a reason to come back to. And when you're planning your script for your videos, try and embed that in teachers. I mean, make them relatively self-contained. You know, we're not looking for episodes of 24 here or lost, but you know, try and give people a reason to hook into or to come back to your videos. And that can pay off in the long run. I mean, again, it builds this idea of loyalty. It builds followers. It builds, you know, people come online to look at video the same way they come on for other reasons, for information and to be informed, to be entertained. Um, but it, uh, there's nothing to say that good information can't be entertaining at the same time. As the chaps at Blendtec proved, this is a blending company that rose to infamy when they took an iPhone and tried to see if it would blend and since then there's been numerous phones and items put in front of them to see you know will it blend what can it do and this has paid off for them because you know there's been a 700 percent increase in sales and to be fair they do say that's not all down to the videos but they believe the videos are responsible for a huge amount of that because you know they say to people suggest something that will blend and we'll see what wins the blender or the item and you know the vast majority of the time the blenders come out tops so and who would have thought you know if someone said oh what can you do that's interesting with a blender 
put a phone in it. You know, it seems a bit daft, it seems a bit absurd. You know, there'll be people worried about brand messaging, you know, but it's paid off. And, you know, sometimes giving yourself that little shake out your comfort zone can work huge, huge results for you. You just have to make sure that it's worth, you know, doing so and make sure you're prepared just in case it doesn't work or some people go, oh, no, I didn't think you would do that or that's not really your brand. So, you know, keep these things in mind. But it's not just about increasing your sales, obviously. You know, you can also use it to grow an email list if you want. You know, create videos that encourage people to send you an email or to pass you on their details. And again, you can do this whole idea of freemium. You know, you could have a three-minute video passing on some tips and advice. And then you say, you know, to find out more, you know, please go to this link. And then you'll know, you know, make that link something specific to the video so that you'll be able to see, you know, just how often that link is actually being used or how useful it's being as a lead generator for you. Something else that's also very handy with video and to be fair with other activities on social media is try and be first, you know, be quick. And this is a good mindset to have, you know, to jump out there and go, hey, we, we see this is just starting to be spoken about. Here's our thoughts or, you know, we're first at this venue or this event and here's our opinions on it. And being first, you know, being that shiny, being that new will always drive you some traffic and get you some attention. You just have to make sure you've got good content behind it and try and give people a good hook for coming back to you. Now, if you're wondering where you can find these things, you know, you know where can you find what people are talking about or what's popular? You know, use tools like Twitter, you know, you, use your Google Alerts, you know, YouTube has a search, you can even search within YouTube comments. YouTube suggest and search also do the very, very same thing. And, you know, th there's no harm there in just spending some time to see what people are saying. Go, yeah, we can be a part of that. Or, no, that's not for us. Because, again, you know, you can't just jump into every scenario or every situation to you know, give your brand some a, a good few mentions. And, again, you know, a little bit of planning. You know, you can't go wrong with it. Hello, I am. This is what I do. Here's who I'm from. That sort of thing does absolutely no harm whatsoever. It reminds people, you know, of who you are, which is always handy. And again, it helps to build that relationship up. And of course, you have to remember, for most, every video is someone's first video, which sounds like a bit of a sort of country and western cliche. But, you know, just because someone knows you're John Smith and has watched the last 15 videos you did, someone, video 16, will be someone's first time of seeing you. So you have to say hi Here's who I am. Here's what I do. You know, there's no harm in that. And similarly, at the end of a, a video, you know, practice what you're going to say. Are you going to send people elsewhere? Are you going to give them a mailing list to join to? Or are you just going to say, all the best, bye? Again, you know, you can do so much with a simple hello and a simple goodbye if you put a bit of thought and planning into it. But it's not just about speaking about yourself that can give you some decent branding opportunities in a video. You know, you can place a logo on the screen or you can have a logo in the background or a logo on a shirt that someone's wearing. And <clears throat> if truth be told, I would advise that try not to put it on the screen because it's less oh, sorry embedded as a logo because that makes it harder or some media, sorry, it makes some traditional media more reluctant to use the video. Whereas if it's just in the background or if it's on someone's t-shirt or if it's a pop-up banner ad, that's in a traditional sense, not in the digital sense. You know, if these things are in the background, then that's fair enough. You know, th those aren't going to be edited out. But if someone sees a big, huge logo in the corner, it may put them off actually using your video elsewhere. Other nice little tools you can do is you know, use YouTube annotations. And, you know, you can add you can add these to videos and you can put them in and say, here's a little bit of extra information, here's fresh information, because all you're doing is editing an updated video, sorry, all you're doing is editing an uploaded video and passing on some extra information. You can use it to add on some sarcastic comments. There's a, there's a lot you can do and play with there. We've already mentioned SEO, but again, it's worth repeating because it is such a key and important part of what you do online you know make sure you've got keywords include links you know share have transcripts you know all of these things are very important you know and it can't be stressed enough that you know keywords you know 
are just the, the lifeblood of how it is. I mean, most people won't go searching for very specific phrases online. Most people, I think it's about 80% of people search by keywords. So you want to try and make sure that your keywords are in there to give yourself a very good chance of being spotted. Now, another company that used video very well was Ramada Encore. And they used this to raise awareness of their, surprise, hotel chain. And what they did was they brought out this new phrase called buffling. And it's a bit of fun. You know, they're saying, like, stop buffling. You know, buffling's a load of nonsense. And, you know, it carried on, though. You know, they brought in script writers to make it popular. You know, they did a, quite a spend, to be honest. And, you know, it paid off, though, because they got this idea out there about buffling. You know, people were talking about buffling. There's been a survey on buddling, buffling even. And they put it online. You know, they let people watch the videos backed it up with blog and traditional press, press activity and the results were very good. And the campaign had a media value of more than £124,000, more than 20 million impressions, pick up globally and you know, for them that's very much a win, especially because you know more than half of the placements either mentioned or linked to the new Ramada Encore site. So you can't get much better than that. But how do you promote? I mean, why do you promote video? It's very obvious why you promote it. You promote it to get people to watch it. And, you know, what can you do to have people look further afield? What can you do so that you own all the Google rankings? You know, a very simple way of doing that is to consider YouTube alternatives. Like Blip TV. You know, it's not the only one out there, though. You know, there's also Vimeo, which for a long time was seen as a more professional site purely because you have to create the video yourself to put it on there. I mean, many people do use Vimeo, but they use it as a, you know, they use it in tandem with the likes of YouTube. Uh, there's also Vidler, you know, which also has some benefits. You know, there's TubeMogul, which can let you distribute videos far and wide to multiple sites. And again, you know, you can get great statistics, but you've got to pay for them. I mean, very many of these sites are on a freemium sort of basis in that the basics are free, but for the rest you have to pay. But YouTube is very, very popular. And it's very popular for a reason, not just because people are creatures of habit. I mean, you say online video, people automatically think YouTube. You know, the site does give you a lot. You know, you can tag videos, you can embed, it's easy to share wherever you go. It does a lot of storing and hosting for you. You know, it takes the effort out of a lot of video. And, you know, it's very straightforward to set up. You know, you can also link up to other sites. So you can link it to your Facebook and Twitter account so that when you put one up online, you know, it goes everywhere. And you can also make sure it's published into your video through some apps. And as an aside, I would just say that, you know, Involver, is a fantastic site to go, to go and look at. So I say a fantastic company for Facebook applications. And again, this is just some advice on how to integrate YouTube with your blog. You know, very often, you know, especially in the latest version of WordPress, it's very easy to do. You are pretty much just cutting and pasting a link and making sure it fits within your, you know, how your blog looks and you're happy with it. And that's just, I mean, again, just as you'd make sure you were happy with anything, you are putting on, make sure you're happy with the video and how it looks. And remember, YouTube especially gives you options to change the sizes of video. So it doesn't need to be more or less a full screen monster. It can just be a small, you know, small, almost postcard, a bit smaller than a postcard sort of sized image for people to watch. And again, you know, think about things that are going to be used as widgets. You know, again, if you're doing blogs, you know, you're being blinks. Are very handy and you know that explains so there that you can use them and it all boosts your traffic I mean this is the thing you have to remember it's all about traffic people can see how often a video is being viewed and that's something to bear in mind but again how do you make it work I mean how do you make this all work for you that's quite simple you know if you've got a really good video you'll know, make sure it goes out to people you know, make sure it goes out to bloggers <laughs> Make sure it goes out to traditional press. Make sure it goes out in a tweet. And obviously, don't be sending all these people, you know, 25, 35, 45 megabyte files or even larger. You'll just send them links. 
and make sure it's available to bloggers who may want to use it. Because, again, there's no point in having this great video and they can only watch it in your spot. Get, try and make life as easy as possible for other people to use your content because that builds you know, really good relations. Now, you can also use YouTube for advertising and you know, it gives you a lot of options. You, know, you can target by audience, by content, by promoted videos and partner watch. We'll go through these fairly quickly so that you've got an understanding of them. But ultimately, I always believe that the best spend is on fresh content. But as some people would say, I have a bias there in that. But you know, you can target your audience by demographics, by geographical, you know, by country, by language, by, by interests. I mean, again, this is all information that people have willingly given Google and YouTube. And in turn, it's letting Google and YouTube work out for... You know, better videos, sorry, better advertising to put towards you. And, you know, what you have to ask yourself is, have you actually ever actually clicked on a, vi a video advert? Do you watch the adverts? Does it put you off? Because, again, it's a fair thing to keep in mind. There's no point in having a huge ad spend if you don't actually think anyone will come and click through to see what your what your advertisement's about. Again, you know, it's, this is just pointing out how it can work. You know, keyword targeting identical practically to Google AdWords you can go by categories as well and you know again as I say the advertising is advertising and it plays a role for some and many people say oh, you have to advertise as part of an overall strategy but again that's very much down to you and also very much down to what your budget is YouTube promoted videos is very much what it says on the tin. You know, you, p you pay to promote your video, YouTube promotes it. It lets people see it that think it may be relevant to. While TrueView video ads are formats that give control and a choice over when messages will be seen. And again, you know, this may work for you, it may not. There's a bunch of options that can work for you. And there's some of them that you may wish to consider if taking out advertising. Now, when you're online, you know, so when you're online, obviously when you're online, that's what we're speaking about. But when you're online and doing video, you know, you don't have to just take the straightforward, flat, you know, page that YouTube gives you. If you've got time, if you've got the budget, if you've got a designer, you know, you can set up a proper brand channel. And it doesn't even need to just be a YouTube page. You, know, you can do it elsewhere. You can even have a nice sort of player set up in your own website. But you know, YouTube does give you a lot of options, a lot of good choices for customization. And again, they're well worth considering if you want to make video a serious part of what you do. But obviously there's other tools that can help you as well. You know, that mentions uh, you know, little gadgets that you can put in a site. You know, and again, it's just taking HTML a simple piece of embedding. Partner Watch again can be a very useful promotion tool if you're looking to use it and it allows you to target placements within YouTube's partner video content. So again, you know, it's one of these things you go, do we want to be a partner? You know, what's the benefit? You know, what's the costs going to be to us? And you have to weigh these things up. And again, you know, look at what's an offer and what can be a benefit or if it's if it's not even a benefit, it may be a hindrance to you. It's just what you have to consider. So, I mean, when it comes to it, you know, there's a lot there. I mean, YouTube, as it points out in this slide here, you know, you're using Google, to, you know, which is a slightly powerful search engine, you know, to go through material. You know, and again, you know, it can find relevant, relevant material for you to advertise to or to advertise with. And you have to work out what options are best for you. And you know, obviously YouTube wants to make money from this. So it gives you as many options as possible. Some of which extend past the normal sort of here's a video advert or here's some video material. You know, we're talking now about the, you know, the original content. You know, YouTube has thousands of people signed up to provide original content. And 
you can work hand in hand with them to do that. We're not talking a lot about it here purely because it's a pricey proposition. And you know, to date, there's there's no one in Scotland saying, yeah, that's what we want to do. You know, there are very few saying, yeah, let's commit to practically, you know, a chat show or you know, hours and hours of expensive content that's going to look good. You know, it's just not an area that many brands you know out with the US of A are feeling comfortable in doing and you know th that will change especially as they see more and how things can be measured on YouTube and YouTube has come leaps and bounds in the last few years in giving you options for what you can do and with video you can see obviously the number of views you know there's attention span there's drop off you know there's favourites there's comments you can see what people are saying in the comments you know, the number of pieces of coverage that have taken your video, there's demographic breakdowns, you know, there's a lot you can do with measurement. You know, YouTube has its own sort of insights, which are very similar to that of Google's, you know, in that you get nice little graphs, you know, you get the graphical image showing you where a video has been watched, how popular it's been, and, you know, you can get demographics, how often people are rating or talking about your videos, you know, I mean, this is all great sort of analysis that years ago would have cost a fortune to get and shouldn't be dismissed. You know, it can even tell you how people found your video. You know, it can also tell you what people really enjoy in your video and what aren't. And you now that that's a lot of tools there. You know, before you'd have just put a video out and went, well, I hope everyone likes it. But now you've got so, so much more that you can do than that. And, you know, it's a fantastic opportunity. And, you know, if you are using YouTube, you have to make full use of these tools so you can get an idea for if you're in touch with the right audience sector or if you're doing something wrong or where's popular in your videos and what isn't. And again, you know, it's not just on YouTube that you can get this service. Tube Mogul also offers it. But again, you have to watch out because that, compared to a lot of the YouTube service, that is a paid for facility, though a very beneficial and good paid for facility.